Hi there, I'm Nicole Schloss. I'm Stephanie Noss, and together we are the Homeplicity Realty Group at Keller Williams in Toronto. And today we are going to be talking about a new concept in real estate mm -hmm. called open bidding. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that we get asked about all the time when it comes to multiple offers. The number one question is, will we be able to know what the other offers are? As of December 1st, we will. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Stephanie a few questions and we'll go from there. Yeah, sounds good. I think it's a prudent conversation and something that's super relevant right now. And I think we can just kind of clear up some of the misconceptions about what will and will not change as a result of this new legislation. Absolutely, and what the buyers and the sellers can control when it comes to open bidding. Right, okay. The first question is, can you break down what open bidding is? Yeah, so I'm the listing agent on our team. When offers come in on one of my listings, there's certain things that I have always had to disclose to other agents and AKA their buyers. I've always had to disclose the number of offers that are on the table. So the number of written offers that have come in, the potential changes that could roll out with the open bidding is there's things that the seller could choose to disclose, like price, conditions, closing date, basically some of the things that would impact the negotiations on the offer and an impact in how other people would structure their offer as well. It's kind of a game changer to multiple offers. I mean, if it actually happens, because it's something that people have to opt into. And I think that's one of the misconceptions mm -hmm. is that sellers don't automatically have to disclose all the contents of the offer. So they have to decide that they want to do it. And I think that they're going to have conversations with their realtors and choose when they should do this in a strategic fashion. And then at the same point, buyers also have to opt in. So we can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, let's break it down into buyers and sellers. Okay. So in a buyer's perspective, how does the whole open bidding kind of play out? Listen, so it's not just the sellers that are controlling everything here, but I would say for the buyers, for example, I've received offers lately on some of my listings and right as a clause in the agreement of purchase and sale, it has said as a clause in the event of open bidding, we don't want our offer or the contents of our offer to be disclosed. Otherwise we're going to be rescinding our offer. So that right off the bat lets me know that if we do end up in a multiple offer situation that I'm not able to disclose the contents of that specific offer. That doesn't mean, however, that the buyer can't see the other offers if the other buyers have opted into disclosing if my client, the seller, decides that they want to do it. So just to clarify on all of that, if I'm coming and bringing you an offer mm -hmm. and I've decided that I do not want the contents of my offer to be shown to other buyers, yep. I can still see what the other buyers have offered. As long as they don't have the same clause in their agreement. So this is where we have like a running loop, right? Right now, it's such a new legislation. As I mentioned earlier, it's only been in place since December 1st, mm -hmm. right? 2023 at this point, we're now in February. So I think buyers and sellers and agents were the ones that are advising your clients. I think everyone's a little bit reluctant to implement this, but you know, I think that there are some benefits to the buyer, especially in a situation where you are in a multiple offer, right? And I can tell you there's been so many times when I received multiple offers on one of our listings and we go back and forth a couple of times with mm -hmm. the top offers specifically. And, and close. Yeah, they're, they're, so they're close. super close. And you know, one of the buyer's agents will say like, this is our max offer. This is my client's best no yeah. regrets offer. And as a buyer agent, the conversation I usually have is if you find out that this property was sold for twenty-five dollars to $5,000 more, will you be upset? And that's where the buyer remorse comes in. And it's possible that by knowing what the other offers are, this removes buyer remorse because yeah. you have a little bit more control. You're not bidding against yourself, which is usually a buyer's biggest fear is that a seller can tell you anything right? But you don't know because you can't see. Well, technically we tell you nothing because the contents of the offer were previously not able to yep. disclose, right? So we would tell you nothing. And then you would kind of have those conversations on the back end wondering 
what the number is. So yep. if you're a buyer agent and you can now see that this offer, if the contents of both of them, especially the price specifically. Well, that's what really makes a break. Yeah, if I you're mean, everyone's looking for a the thousand dollars apart, the chance that you would actually improve your offer knowing that it's not a bluff or that it's not a $10,000 or $20,000 difference because before you didn't know. So having that concrete information and having those numbers and just the extra information, mm -hmm. I think some buyers in certain situations will be able to use this to their benefit. If nothing else, then waking up the next day and not feeling like they completely got overplayed. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. And there's no or finding out that you missed out by 1500 bucks or something, right? Absolutely. So on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. how does this benefit the seller? I mean, if we can get sellers to adopt the strategy, then I think that there could be certain situations where this would be advantageous. The big problem that I see for sellers agreeing to this is why would they when oftentimes if there's five, six, 10, 85, <laughs> like there was a property in the news a couple weeks ago where that happened, why would they disclose those numbers when the difference between the second highest offer and the top offer is 50,000, 85,000, $100,000, $200,000, right? They're not going to. It's not to the seller's advantage to do that. And I think part of the reason why we've seen these crazy bids in prices going up because they're blind. is because they're blind offers and that number isn't disclosed. So you get someone who's really eager, who submits a really high price. It's like knocks all the other ones out of the park. So the seller obviously is going to be motivated, especially when we're in a seller's market to take that offer. And then that sets a precedent so that future sales will continue to sell at that number. So yeah. You know, I think the reason that these changes have come about is to try and add an extra layer of transparency to the real estate market that wasn't there before. And it's not a free for all where it just automatically happens. The seller still has to opt into it. So I think for the most part, depending on what type of market we're in, I think that the seller likely will not disclose unless it's in their best interest. When would that be? That would be in a scenario where we're kind of at a stalemate. Usually it's near the end where we have two or three offers. I was just gonna say it's that it's that yeah. little pinch that I feel like the sellers might not benefit from anymore because if there are two people or three buyers yeah. and keeps going up by let's say 5,000, 10,000. Sometimes 000. it gets to a thousand bucks. Right, like, and both offers will come back around the same because we've kind of got right to the top end of where market value is, and like that's another whole conversation. Right, but if the bids are open, and everything is a thousand dollars apart, then you almost get that one dollar, two dollar, three dollar like type of silent auction, or not silent yeah. auction, uh, what, what's auction it effect. <laughs> there yeah. you go, the auction effect where. Again, everyone knows what it is, but if it's blind, then in my experience, the buyers are more willing to offer 5,000, 10,000. But that's like when that. you would use it as a seller, when you would come to the point where we've unfortunately squeezed these poor buyers up to the very max that they can afford or to the max of where market value is. And you know, you're saying, look, if offers had previously been blind, like more of the traditional way that we've been selling real estate for the last forever, and then you get to the point where you're really close, that's when a seller might opt to disclose, or even if you have one that has conditions and one that doesn't, right? And you wanna have a firm offer, one slightly higher, but the higher offer has some conditions in it, that's when you might choose to, right? To see if you can get the higher price to either remove the conditions or the offer that has the lower price with no conditions, right? Like there's certain strategic ways and instances where it would make sense or if we have a couple offers that are improving and they're still at the same level and nobody's moving. I've had situations where I genuinely have two offers that are the exact same and they come back again the exact same and it comes to the point it's happened. where- It happens a lot and, and to be honest, that's when you need a really good agent who has a very good relationship with the listing agent. The or, buyer agent. Yeah, because sometimes that's when other things come into play, which we can talk about in a whole other video and go yeah. on and on about that. One thing I want to bring up is the point with, we were talking about having everything open, hmm. but here's something that we need to let you guys know. The seller can actually remove that mm -hmm. at any time also. So yeah. your first round could be open bidding, but then they decide the second round isn't. So it's not that clear cut. Yeah. 
and you have to be aware that it can change within the offer situation. Yeah, and suddenly one of you're the buyers, again. your purchaser, could resubmit a stronger improved offer and say, do not disclose the terms of my offer, I'm gonna rescind it, right? So it goes both ways. And um, yeah. it's still really new. You know, people are gonna use it to their advantage when they can. Yeah. I actually think it's quite confusing. <laughs> I think that I'm not sure how many people will actually opt into this mm -hmm. because it seems like it can get to be a very unfair game where suddenly you're aware of certain offers and then that's just taken away from you. So it will be very interesting to see how this kind of plays along. I think year. it's not what the public perception of it when the talk of open bidding was first coming out and like the goal to have further transparency in real estate. I just don't know if that's actually been achieved. It's because it can, st it's still on the whim of the buyer or the seller, whether or not they want the terms of their offers to be open, right? So Everyone always asks, like I said, it's the number one question. Are we yeah. gonna be able to know the other offers? And as much as I think people want to know, they also don't. Like I remember there was a house in Australia, they do open bidding on a house, it's an auction. There was a home a few years ago, it might have, must have been like 10 years ago, where they did an open bid and nobody showed up because I don't know, it's like... It's that's actually the process in Australia and the interesting thing, that. <laughs> but that's like the, the straight up process in yeah. Australia. All, all of their offers are open. I just, I don't know if that was 100% clear. So they always have open bids on everything all the time and they're still the number three most expensive overpriced real estate markets in the world so if it, yeah. it's not working there i don't know if it's going to have much of an impact here yeah so i don't know sometimes i think it'll just create more competition right because with blind everyone wants to be the winner you know and i know a lot of people are competitive but i feel like once you actually know the price that you're competing against you might just like yeah get a little but crazy. it's just going to be like smaller increases well auctions you know what the price is and people still go up I think what it will stop, and which is why I think sellers won't opt to do it this way, it's gonna stop having one offer, $80,000, like one huge front runner, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are also opportunities where it could be advantageous for a seller in a different market. So what we've been discussing, again, it's on our mind because the housing market in Toronto has heated up a lot mm -hmm. and we are seeing multiple offers on this. They're yeah, back. They're, they are back. Definitely the market's heated up a little bit, but if we go back maybe to where we were in the summertime or in the early to late fall, where it was more of a buyer's market or more of a balanced market, mm -hmm. sellers could opt to have open bidding and have that disclosed in the listing that everything's gonna be open. Um, and again, they have the option to remove that, but to have the property priced a lot lower and say that it's gonna be an open bidding process so everyone knows what the other offers are. So there's always reasons where they might do it and that might attract some investors or just people who are looking for a little bit of a deal and they don't want to overpay, they don't want to be in a traditional sense of competition where they feel like they're going to grossly overpay for the property. If you know what all the other bids are, it kind of eliminates that a little bit. I'm very excited to see what will happen. I think actually nothing's going to change. <laughs> I think nothing's going to change. I think it's... I think everyone's begging for this and then yeah. it's here and I, I don't think people will well, like it. Well, because they're giving people the choice, right? It's If they haven't rolled it out and said that everyone has to just implement and adopt this, like they're giving people the choice and... I think there's going to be some pissed off people. Excuse my language. I think it's going to play out differently than they expected it to, yeah. especially on the buy side. And for sellers. Yeah. Right? I think that they're going to hope for a lot of money and they might not just get that with buyers knowing what the other offers are, right? Because I don't think really they're going to agree it to do it. Much as a, someone's willing to pay for it. I don't think they're going to agree to have open bids until you get further into the negotiations, the way the market is right now. But again, we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. We will have to see and we will definitely keep you in the loop on that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm very excited to know what will happen, how it will play out. Let's talk about what open bidding actually looks like. Mm -hmm. So previously, every time I had a new offer registered, I would have to inform all the other agents in some way. So either through a paging system, through our office, email, text message, I would have to say, there are X number of offers. There's like another whole layer of like multiple representation and 
designated representatives and how that works. Yeah, so just to cut in there, how it was and how it still is, is that you were only ever allowed to know how many offers are registered on a property. That was it. Yeah. That was all that we were allowed to disclose. Yeah, so the difference now, if I have it in writing from my seller, that they want me to disclose either all or portions of the offer. It could be, there are five offers. This would go out as an email page, text message, however I want to do it, to the other agents, notify them. There are currently eight offers mm -hmm. on the property. Offer one, price is 780,000. Conditions are status certificate and financing if it's a condo. Closing date is X. Offer number two has opted out of disclosing the contents of their offer. Offer three is 720,000 and so on and so on and so on. So there would, at any point during the negotiation process, the seller can change to eliminate some of the points of the offer or to stop the open process altogether. Right, which is something that I think all agents need to really let their buyers know about. The buyer also can just decide to opt out of a certain round of disclosing. So yeah. you could all come back with a really, really sexy offer that you think is gonna blow all the other ones out and say, I don't want the contents of my offer being disclosed now so that someone can beat me by a thousand bucks, right? Or someone can remove a condition or move the closing data. So It's a game. Yeah. <laughs> it is a gambling game. It does give the buyers <laughs> a little bit more control though, which a little yes, bit. Yes, but it's also going to be more infuriating for a lot of buyers because I they're going to know that. and then they're not going to know and then they're going to know and they're going to be so angry and furious because they had control and now they don't have control and it's literally like playing craps. <laughs> like, you know? I think it's still going to be more of a seller's game, but we'll see. Again, it all depends on the market and whether we're in a buyer's or a seller's market. Yeah. How do you think open bidding will stir things up in Ontario's real estate market? I mean, I said this before. I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to. I think that it's such a new process. I feel like there's a lot of agents who probably don't understand it. I think it's going to take a lot to get to educate the sellers and to educate the buyers on this. And I think most of the brokerages have given a list of new clauses and schedules to their agents and said, include these to protect your clients. I think I've seen almost every single offer that's come across my desk since December has had that clause in it, saying that if in the event of multiple offers, we are not disclosing the contents of our offer or we're gonna rescind it, right? So just to expand on that a little bit, also as of December 1st, we used to be bound by something called REBA mm. and now it's called TRESA. There are yeah. just new practices in place for real estate agents. I actually think it was about time. Needed. It really just put a stricter line between what we can and can't do. They're just trying to create more transparency in the real estate transaction Yeah, and for, for buyers and sellers. Yeah, and I just, I think it was about time. That kind of leads me to my next question with the federal folks talking about changing of real estate practices, like ending mm -hmm. line bidding. Yeah. How do you think that's gonna play out here in the provincial level in the future? I just don't see this being adopted on a level that's gonna have an impact on prices. I mean, some of the transparency law and having better explanations of how buyers and sellers work and transact and what they're getting when they hire us, like more of a service agreement, I think that. And again, we can go in way more detail on some of these new changes in Tressa if that's a point of interest. But I think the main goal and what everyone thinks is this open bidding process is going to roll out and that's going to stop prices from being inflated. But I don't think enough people are going to adopt it. I don't think it's in seller's best interest in a multiple offer situation when we do see those price increases to implement that strategy. So I don't think that it's going to have a impact on pricing and stop pricing from increasing, especially if we see the Bank of Canada start to bring rates down. I think it's going to start going crazy again. I was just thinking, what would have 2021, which was the 
craziest market that mm. I have ever experienced. One of them, Same. actually. I think, no, I think it was the craziest. Years, definitely the it craziest. It was the craziest. And I can't imagine what open bidding would have been like then. I don't know if it would have been beneficial or if it would have stopped it a little bit with all the bully offers I'm just, and the crazy overbidding. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just, just thinking about this from a listing agent's perspective. There were times, like around that timeline, when I would get 27... 30 offers on a property. Do you think that I'm going to advise my client for all of these offers to have to disclose everything? It would take us forever. It wouldn't be beneficial to the seller. It would literally take three days Yeah, the to go over all the offers. Yes. The only time where I can see that having any benefit at all is if we have two or more, like a small number of offers that have already gone through the entire negotiation process. And it's down a to couple the last, rounds and yeah. we're down to like the last couple dollars, the last couple of conditions, right? So I just, I don't see there being a huge change. I, I think it's going to be extremely overwhelming for buyers. I think it will be very overwhelming for them to see, in the example of 30 offers, them to see the contents of all 30 offers. Like I think that it would be extremely Really? I feel like that, see for me, if I was a buyer, that I like numbers and data. Like you know this about me, like I would love to have my spreadsheet and have that out and be looking to see from like round to round what the average increase was. I think it really depends on the type of person, whether they're gonna like that or not. I don't know, it might discourage them a little bit more. I think it would stop having someone do a huge jump above and beyond, but maybe not. You know, in auctions, in the movies, you always <laughs> see someone go up by like $100,000 or like some big jump to try and discourage other buyers. I don't know. I guess that's my long, long-winded answer is, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I need to see it in play. I just don't think that's going to happen as much as everyone thinks it's going to. No, I think that everyone wanted it and now that it's here, no one's... Because they have a choice. Yeah. If it was forced and it was just one thing where every offer was open, I think it would be different. Yeah, no, but I agree with you. I think where it would make the greatest change to a buying and selling experience is at the end. Because yeah. that's when your emotions get in. That's when you're frustrated. You just want it to be over already. Because the conversation I always have with my buyers at the end is they are so afraid to bid against themselves. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's very easy well, to do that. Because you don't that. know. Yeah, you don't you know. You have no idea, you know? And you have the listing agent just really saying anything they want. And there's no way to prove it. So... I think that that's when it will be the most beneficial and I think that that's when buyers will possibly not have buyer's remorse if they do or I don't want to say buyer's remorse but because if you actually don't get it just you can have as much remorse in that situation kind of more get it yeah yeah Yeah. you know what my first time ever experiencing a multiple offer this was 2013 i remember it ended up being between me and one other agent let's just say because our buyers actually weren't even there with us at that point and she had one and she came up to me and asked me was just said can i just ask what your offer was Mm. which like you're really not supposed to do but i told her her offer was seventy thousand dollars over mine 70,000. She could have offered $2,000 and would have gotten it. And the look on her face, which she was like, I'm never telling my clients that. Like, why would you? Because I would puke if I was her client. Mm -hmm. But that is the reality is that sometimes it's just better not to know. But yeah, she bid $70,000 more. It happens. The last question that I'm going to ask dear Stephanie over here is with all these changes, how should real estate agents be stepping up for their clients? Mm -hmm. What's the new playbook looking like for them? We talked about the new TRESA rules that we're now all bound by, Mm -hmm. but what does this mean for real estate agents and their clients? How can we help them make better decisions, better offers? How can we advise them? Yeah, I think it's number one going to start with explaining exactly what the changes are and what the process would look like, Mm -hmm. what they can and cannot do. And the surprises could come. Well, just the benefits, right? And I think that strategy is like, I typically work with sellers, so my mind always goes there first, but I feel like it's something where I would explain to them, here's the pros and cons of doing it, right? And depending on the market, depending on the offers that are in, 
why we would choose to go through that way, right? So like we said, there's gonna be certain instances where we probably would disclose something. If I have two offers that are the same or one slightly better with conditions or without, just explaining that. And then I think that a lot of the conversations with this will have to be more on the buyer's agents yes. end, right? And explaining that and that the fact that even though the seller has opted to have open offers, that that could change the terms of the offer that are going to be disclosed can change. So I think it would be good just if I was representing a buyer, I would definitely want to make sure that I have explained it all and future pace them so that they know what to expect and what that could look like. Worst case scenarios, yeah. best case scenarios, like really just painting a picture to them of what could potentially happen. I think it's going to be like what I will tell my clients and what I have. We haven't had multiple offers on any of our listings because they're condos. I know that's happening more in the housing market right now, but I would just be having those conversations with my sellers to be like, look, here's where I would probably recommend having open bids. Here's where I wouldn't, you know, the strategy is going to change. This is kind of like what this would look like. These are what your obligations are. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a case by case situation, right? I might say, let's not start having our offers be open, but also let them know, like, listen, even if we decide that we want to do this, there's buyers that can opt out of it, right? That can throw a bit of a wrench into the situation, especially if that's your top offer, right? If that's the best offer and I have five other ones, do I want to disclose all of those prices, right? It's one of those things. Like it's, it's going to be property by property. It's going to be round by round. Yeah. Like each different stage of the, the negotiating process. But I think the way that agents can help have bring better clarity or transparency, which is the goal to this, is just to explain exactly what that looks like, to take a look at the situation, use your our level of experience and negotiation expertise, and let them know when this would be advantageous to them and when it would be advantageous to continue with the status quo or basically the norm. Yeah, I agree. On both sides, all around. Yeah. I hope you guys found this helpful. Yes. <laughs> If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. And as always, if you know anyone else who would get good value from this, go ahead and share the video. Please subscribe to keep up to date with all future real estate topics. Go ahead and give this video a like and we will see you in the next one. And one more thing I just want to add. We recently did a blog post mm, on this. We, we will attach link. the link down below if you want to read more about it. Some people learn better by reading. And if you have any questions mm -hmm. and you want to talk about this more. Or your scenario. Yeah, please feel free to reach out because I have a feeling there will be some questions. Yeah. I have questions. I have questions too. Yeah, love to see.